Hey folks, well as you can see, it's more uh, work on the car video. I uh, recorded the process of removing this. This is the intake manifold off of the car, but uh, I might do a time lapse of it, but it was took me quite a long time. You can see there's a lot of a lot of crap you have to disconnect and figure out and snake it out. So we'll see if I post that video or not. But uh, in this sitting, I am going to continue dismantling this because what I need to do is get the tumble generator valves out. Now, if you've been following any of my previous videos, you know that uh, I'm doing a tumble generator valve delete so that I can uh, get rid of my pesky check engine light. And the tumble generator valves, I don't know if you can see in the video or not, it's these um, spacer pieces. And there's some butterflies in there. I'll show you once I get it apart. But I've got to take all that junk out and gut it and uh, make it happier. I've already done the tuning on the engine to uh, get rid of the uh, codes. So it's time to do this. Now the first thing, boy I got an echo in here. First step is to get rid of these bolts. I took most of them out but I had to put them back in to get this apart. So I figured the intake manifold would come apart separate from the valves but they don't. Live and learn. So, uh, probably took me five, six hours of horsing around just to uh, figure this out but so that's that. Need to take some screws out of there, or just the connectors. For now, like that. There's a motor. That's the uh, sensor. And the back side is a motor. Now I don't know. If this is the side that was giving me trouble. I don't know if the motor is bad or what. Regardless, it can all go. It's going to cause. The only thing it'll cause is some. Uh, cool temperature startup idle issues but after 20 seconds or so that'll go away and apparently and I've heard that it's all conjecture or whatever but I've heard you pick up a good 10 to, 10 to 12 horsepower when you do this delete and you don't have to retune the uh, the ECU in the car. So I will get these apart. Just hold on a sec. I might have a problem. I'll get these sensors off and we'll pull this apart. I had to grab an 8mm wrench. Get this off. And it's not an 8mm. It's like a 7mm. Hold on a sec, folks. It's a little tight and I don't want to use the I tried using a screwdriver, but it didn't want to come loose, so it should do the trick. There it is. I want to save these screws or find replacements because i got to make a block off plate on each end of this. Another thing that this job is going to allow me to do is uh, I had a fuel leak down in here, and these, this particular year of car is notorious for fuel leaks because of these, you can see them, these clamp style uh, units, so I'll tighten all those as well. Sorry, had a little interruption, but uh, continue on here, get all these pieces off, and I just spotted something inside. Now this isn't the original engine in the car, not sure what happened to the original engine, so it's swapped out for uh wasn't a new one it was a pulled from another car but uh, i just spotted something inside that's a good thing it's it is where it is i'll show you here once i get this all apart okay so those are the two sensors and this they're just a they're the same as a throttle body sensor in a regular subaru but uh, i'm gonna scratch it and pull these motors off now okay it should work. I'm gonna have to make, uh, like I said, make some blanking plates. There's the motor. 
in there. And that spins this and that opens and closes the butterflies, but you'll see that. I guess I could pull these off right now. Uh, have to remove fuel lines. And then that should all come off. that they use the rubber hoses. Well I guess they have to be able to remove this assembly but like I say I I have the notorious cold weather fuel leak in this you'd smell it during cold weather. I'll have to uh I'll make sure and fix that as well just by making sure that all these are super tight. So I'll get these all off and then uh, we'll continue on. Okay, well, I had to, uh, I ended up cutting the fuel lines, as you can see, just because I was having a hard time and I figure all these short rubber lines, I'm just going to replace them all, buy some bulk fuel line and replace them all because things apart and off. Mine as well. Car is 10 years old so why not take the opportunity to to do it. Fuel lines cheap. Now I don't know if I'll be able to get any for till after the Easter weekend right now so I probably won't be able to get any till Monday, Tuesday. But whatever. I had planned on uh, having the car down for the count for some time. But we'll see. I know the auto parts stores are open today, but I was just in town and I don't feel like driving back into town again. So I got to make sure. Also, I might have to get some replacement gaskets as well. A lot of guys say as long as they're not torn, you can reuse them. So that's a, something else I have to consider. So, what I want to show you, yeah, I keep catching myself saying so all the time, but I'll show you something I spotted. Actually, I'll show you the tumble generator valve butterflies first. There they are. Can you see them right there? Maybe I can... Because actually, otherwise it would probably be easier. There is the source of my pain. So I'm going to gut all that, take all this off, and a lot of guys take this divider plate as well, which I think I will do too, and then they smooth it all out and uh, snap her back together. Now, before I do any of that, I'm dumping fuel out, I'm going to take the injectors out, because the last thing I want is to have crud fouling up the injectors. That's a Torx screwdriver. So I'll take the injectors out and pull this other motor out. Rusty bolts. I think I can get in there with that guy. Because it's not a 12, it's a 10, dummy. But I bought some uh, rust remover soaking penetrant or whatever it's called evapo rust and I'm going to do some of these bolts. This car originally came from uh, Ontario where they put a lot of crap on their roads in the winter time and it just eats the cars to death. So the car was originally from there so it's got all the rust that you'd expect an Ontario car to have. It's unfortunate, but I'll deal with as much as I can while it's apart. Let's grab a different socket here. A tight fit, but there she be. Heck, I could probably even eBay these things. Might be worth a try. 
test them and make sure their motors are working. Maybe the motors are okay and there's something else going on, but the gears aren't stripped or anything. I can just feed some juice to them and see if it uh, spins or not, but maybe it was a bad sensor. I had replaced the sensor, but uh, it was with a Chinese knockoff, whatever you want to call it, or a sensor from China, so who knows if it was good or not. So as I was saying, I'll take these out, and then we're going to gut those butterflies out of there. Well, I decided, now I got a couple of the injectors out. A little bit tricky, but this is the uh, rust removal stuff. I've used it before. Works not bad, evapo rust. And as you can see, these ones in particular are pretty gnarly. Whether I'll reuse them or not, I don't know. But these little brackets, oh, ah, from the uh, hold the injectors in, you can see uh, they're really rusty. Some of them throw them in this old uh, cascade laundry dishwasher detergent bucket and throw all these other screws in as well and throw some of this in and let it all soak usually you let it soak for a good 24 hours and I've used it before and it really it works quite well There we go. And this bucket will work okay. Stuff won't evaporate. But, uh, I can use this as my parts cleaner. I'll continue on with getting these injectors out. They're a little bit tricky. You've got to be careful because the O rings. You don't want to damage the O rings. And I do see the fuel rails do come off as well. So I think I'm going to take those off too. To the bucket. I don't know if these were Loctited in, but probably use some blue Loctite to hold it all in. Now to pull these out, whether I'm using the right method or not, I'm not sure. But I'm just using a oh, text message is coming in. Using a screwdriver to get it started, like so. And I can get it under there. And just off she pops. But be careful when you're prying that you don't pry on any of these surfaces because you don't want to nick the gasket surface uh, and it won't seal properly. How the heck did I get that last one off? There she goes. I know I've got. That. And I'm going to wrap these up in a shop towel. Keep them all nice and safe somewhere. Alright. Now I am going to pull these fuel rails off. Looks like they just kind of sit in there. I don't know if there's an there is an O-ring seal. I'm just trying to prevent, because I'll be doing lots of grinding in that in here, I want to prevent damaging any of the stuff that should be out of the, can be out of the way. Might as well throw them all in there. There. Oh, there's one on this side. Like so. Off she comes. Oh yeah, see there's like a seal down there. It's not really an O-ring so much as a... I guess it's still considered an O-ring. It's kind of a flat, flat seal. So I'll have to make sure and lube those up really good when I put them back together. So you don't tear any of the... Oh, that's a tight one. Don't tear any of the seal. Like a glove, both the rubber 
seal stayed inside. Ooh, some grime in there. Some mung. My problem with getting parts is I don't live, I live a couple hours from the nearest Subaru dealership in the city. And I don't go there very often, so trying not to damage anything. So there you go. There's the temple generator valve spacers. So as I was saying, these butterflies and shafts need to come out. And what I'll end up doing is drilling these screws because they're staked. And if you try to back them up, let's see if I can show you. They don't, they'll start coming out, but you won't be able to get them all the way out. So, if I drill the head off, the screw will go out the other way. So let's fire up the drill and see what we can wreck. Or actually, maybe I'll use my... Because I'm not saving the shaft anyway. It's all coming out and it's going to be trashed. So maybe what I'll do is use my uh, Dremel and a cut-off disc and cut the heads off. So let's go find the Dremel. Okay, I got the trusty old Dremel out. Before I did anything, I uh, hosed these down and cleaned them off because, yeah, cutting with a Dremel when there was fuel in there, probably not the best idea. And remember the uh oh I said? I found this piece in there. I'm trying to figure out, it looks like. I thought it was a piece of piston skirt. Cause like I say, this engine isn't the original. But it was actually wedged. Thank goodness it was wedged in. Let me see. Dropped it down. It was wedged in. In there. Thank God it didn't come out. Because boy oh boy that would have been bad. But I just can't figure out what the heck it is. Because it's got a machine surface on both sides. But who knows. Yeah, you know what it is? I know what it is. Yeah, it's the top of a piston. So that would have been uh, where the ring went in and it snapped off and uh, in she went. So there you go. That uh, shows you that this engine is probably not, well, not the original. It's definitely not the, from the piston in the current engine because it runs fine. So let me just find my safety glasses and we'll fire up the Dremel and... See what we can wreck. Always wear your safety glasses when you're doing this sort of thing. They're always you're asking for asking for some crap in your eyeball. So let's see if this plan's gonna work. Sorry for the air compressor noise, but uh, it's a necessary evil. I'm going to get that air compressor. I'm going to build a little shack on the outside of the shop. Move it out there. Now, I've got the head uh, off, but i got to... Oh, boy. Maybe it'll work better this way. Just gotta, even though the head is... Yeah, why didn't I do it this way, dummy? Got a different idea for the next one. Oh, got a cat outside. I'm almost out. It's got to be an easier way, and I think I know what I'm going to do. So I'll get these all uh, taken out, and then uh, we'll proceed to the next step. There she is. Hold tight. All right, I found a simpler way of doing it. I ended up grinding the uh, the back side off of the screw where it was staked, and that made it a lot easier. So now you can see the screws are out. Open her up. Out they come. Now normally you could just maybe leave it like that, 
but you need a way to seal it. And so I'm pulling the whole shaft out. And I've just been looking to try to figure out how the heck. Normally the shafts are just held in by the butterflies, but not in this case. I don't know if there's a a ring behind here or if it's the seal. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to figure that out. And I've looked. The internet doesn't really show you much, so they don't come out at all. It's really it's hard to see. So maybe if I pull this apart somehow, or just start. Maybe I can cut this away. I'm going to fire up the uh, die grinder and do some more cutting, and then I'll get those shafts out and go from there. Well, I think I got her. There's actually a bearing under there, but I uh, did some creative cutting with the Dremel. It's just a, it is just a press fit. There she goes. Voila. I don't know if I can get that bearing out or not. This is just a rubber seal, I think. Take that out. Or not. Doesn't really need to come out for the way I plan on sealing it. And the bearing doesn't really need to come out, but I'd like to get it out. Might come in handy for something else. But, uh, let's see. Mm, just out maybe hmm. screw it I'm gonna leave it in it doesn't matter here's all the bits and pieces that I just ripped out the spring and some washers and a gear and all sorts of other scrap iron which I didn't don't think I needed to cut out but we'll see here we'll try her on the other one Give it some tappy tappies on the shaft. There she goes. Good scrap iron. Too bad I have no scrap iron dealers around here that I can take stuff to. Now, that was all good and fine. Get rid of these two. So there's the basic delete. Actually, I might keep these. Or not. So what I plan on doing to seal these up, what some guys would do was tap this, put a bolt in, and then grind it all off. Same with this side. But what I'm going to do is I've got some cork, cork gasket material kicking around. I'm just going to make a plate of some sort that uh, sits in here, bolts down, and then it seals onto that surface to uh, seal it all up. And same with this side. Uh, heck, I've even got the got these round things, but wouldn't do me much good, actually. I'll probably just grind off this lip, make a plate, goes over here, bolts down with some gasket underneath, and put a little bit of extra... RTV, gasket maker, sealant, blah, 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 whatever you want on it, and uh, that'll be good. Now, there's the hole in between the two, but from what I've uh, read, people don't even worry about sealing that up. You get a little bit of air between them, but it's no big deal. It just balances things out, and I wouldn't have any way. If I had a TIG welder, I could weld it all up, but I don't, so... That's how I'm going to do it. So that's it for this video. Next video I'm going to cut, figure out how I'm going to cut all this out. Or cut this uh, divider out. Because it needs to go as well. It doesn't need to go, but I'm going to get rid of it anyway. The aftermarket the TGV delete spacers you get don't have that. Don't have that spacer. And... Uh, the thing I've read, it's like guys get rid of it. I don't know why. Oh, I think that's for when the uh, motor 
closes the butterflies. It still gives a little bit of a spot for the air to get through for idle purposes, kind of like an idle circuit. And then when the butterflies open up, it goes through the main bore. But I need to cut those out and smooth it all in and make the plates. So like I say, the next video will be cutting that stuff out. So until then, take care and talk to you later.